Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here and this is a brand new course called Become a Python Pro. So in this course, we'll be covering all things Python from beginner level all the way through to advanced level Python. No stones left unturned. So this is the first video, let's jump straight into it. Okay, before I kick off on this first video, if you can just subscribe to the channel and click the bell, so every time I add a video, you're notified. Also, like and comment on this video. I love the feedback and it helps me grow the channel. So, what will we cover in this video? Um, firstly, let's look at the screen here. This is Visual Studio Code. It's a text editor I like, I like, that I really love. I use it all of the time when coding in Python. It acts like an IDE, don't worry. I will go through what text editors and IDEs are and what we use them for in another module. But what you're looking at is VS Code. So the course is going to be accompanied with a GitHub repository and there'll be a branch for each and every video so that you can just dive in and look at some of the code examples that I've got and you can use it as your own cheat sheet. Link to that repository will be in the description below. Right, so in this video, we'll be getting started with Python. So you need Python on your local machine for you to be able to use their interpreter and start coding in Python, running scripts and things like that. Also, you might find that you'll work on different projects over your career, and that will require you using different versions of Python because older versions may not have the functionality that the new ones do. For instance, Python version 3.10 has match and case statements version 3.9 doesn't. Now, I've done videos previously on how to switch between um, Python versions on your local machine. In fact, a link to that video is at the top of the screen now, but I'm gonna show you how to get started and get it installed on your machine, just the most recent version. And also, I'll show you how to get Python up and running in Docker, because I find it really easy to code in Docker containers, and it makes it fantastically easy switching between versions. Okay, so bear with me on this video because I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. But let's get Python on my machine. So this is VS Code. I'll open a new terminal and I'll just show you. Let me make this a bit bigger. I'm doing a video here. There we go. We've got ourselves a uh, close that, close that. Okay, so this is just a basic terminal, VS Code. You can see that I've got um, my terminal open in become a python pro directory that i've got my local machine now you can clone this down from github good to go but that's where i am if i go python dash dash version it will say that python cannot be found because a python isn't installed on my machine and b my machine cannot find where it's located in my environment variables which is all part of installing python so let's go ahead and get python installed i'll open up my browser and we'll visit welcome to python.org. So it's www.python.org, that's their main website. This is what it looks like. You've got an about us tab, downloads, documentation, community, all bunch of stuff. Bit of bedtime reading, have a little look at what Python's all about. The documentation on here is fantastic. Okay, and actually on the screen here, you can launch an interactive shell. So it's like an interpreter straight in the browser here and it will load it. And this here, when you've got these three sort of greater than symbols, that means that uh, the interpreter is running and is waiting for an input to give you an output. So we can just go one plus one, return two. Two times seven equals 14. You can go um, five, one more two. We'll go through what all of that means and operates and things like that in another module. But this is an interpreter. And this is what I really like about Python's site. You can just have a little tinker directly on the browser itself. But let's go ahead and download the latest version. So if you go on to downloads, I've got a Windows machine. You might have a Mac or other. Um, when you hover over downloads, you can see here, it's a bit bigger. How's that? So if we go to downloads, you can click in Windows and that will give you all of the different releases that you've got 3.10.10, 3.11.2. You can find the download in here, depending on the type of version that you're looking for, but I'm going for the most recent one, okay? So if you click in Python 3.11.2, which is the most recent version at the time of reading this, you can see in the bottom of my screen, just about, that is downloading the exe file. 
I'll open that. Wait a second, it won't open. There we go. Can you see that? Okay, so you've got a couple of ish, um, couple of options. You can click install now. That will go ahead and it'll install on your machine. It'll ask you for if you want to add python.exe to your path, which is your environment variables on your machine. That's essentially, that lets your terminal or your machine know where Python lives so you can start running the interpreter and what have you. I'm going to do a customize install because I'm going to tell Python where to install this version of Python. Okay, so what do we want? Um, don't want the documentation. Pip test suite, Python. Da, 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 da. Ah, that'll do. Do you know? I'm not having documentation. Click next. Install 3.11 for all users. Um, I'm going to add it to my uh, environment variables. Compile standard library. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to browse my local directory because it's telling me that it's going to install in program files Python 3.11. Well, I don't want to put it there. I want to put it in um, my C drive. If I can find it, PC, C drive. I've got a directory in there called Python. Now you need to create that, but that was all, that's a legacy that was there before. Click there, click OK. And I want to call this backslash Python underscore 3112. Browse. There we go. And install. We just blanked the screen out of it. I let it that out. Um, and it's going ahead and it's installing Python on my machine. So whilst it's going through and initializing, I'm not going to pause the video because it looks like it's going through it pretty damn quickly. So just to recap, we're just installing 3.11.2 on my Windows machine. If you're using a Mac or Linux, you would need to find the appropriate one for your machine. Obviously, you're not going to want to install Windows on a Mac. It just won't work. Um, but it's nice and easy. Um, if you got this far, you probably know your way around um, installs and things like that. So there we go. You can see here we've got my C drive, Python, and now we've got Python 3.1.1.2. And it's got all of the um, files and repositories and things like that that we're going to need. We're gonna, there'll be an exe file in there that allows us to fire up Python as well. Okay. Standard library. And I think we're going to be done in just a second. There we go. Set up what's successful. New to Python. Start with an online tutorial. The tutorials on Python are really, really good, actually. They walk you through um, data types and functions and classes and lists and dictionaries and things like that. But I'm going to go through them in, uh, myself. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to open up a VS Code. And I might need to close this, this down, but I'm going to still try. No, I'm going to have to close it down. Let's open up VS Code again. I should remember where I was. New terminal. Having all sorts of fun there. There we go. So it's now working. So um, don't be worried if you've installed and it doesn't work in your um, your terminal. Just close it down. It probably just needs a refresh and just realize that something's changed. Um, it's also worth noting that if you make a change to your environment variables, sometimes you need to restart your machine for them to be activated. I found that the hard way a few times where you change something, it just doesn't work straight away. You need to restart. Okay, so don't worry about that. Again, look, you can see I've put Python version there. If I now type Python, that'll fire up the interpreter. Remember we see on the browser a moment ago when you had the three greater than symbols, and then it allows you to type an input to give an output. Um, it's right at the bottom of the screen here. You can still see that. Again, one plus one, here we go, two. Happy days. So we now know that Python is installed on our machine. We don't need to do anything else. Now you can start running um, packages such as Django and Flask, so you can work with um, web development and things like that. So, good. Let's go ahead and um, show you how to run Python in Docker. Let's exit this. 
Oh. There we go. So we've just cleared the screen there. So you can see in the repository on GitHub when you clone it down, there's something called Docker example. Within there, you've got a few files. Now you'd need to install Docker and Docker Compose on your local machine. I'm not gonna do that. I've already got it installed. Just go ahead and do that outside of this tutorial, get it on your machine and you'll be good to go. So really what you wanna see is, there we go, I've got Docker and Docker-Compose. There we go, I've got Docker and Docker Compose on my machine, which will allow me to run certain commands and fire this up. Okay, I've also, you can see in this repository here, I've got a maker file, so I've got a maker installed on my machine. It just allows me to run codes, um, you know, long snippets of scripts with a single line or, or two words. Um, so I won't go into that, but you've got a maker file there if you've got it installed in a local machine. You can fire up Docker in this instance by going uh, make build and that will fire everything up. But I've got a little readme file in here. It's a Docker example. There we go. So um, in VS Code, it's got this really handy kind of uh, preview. So if you're writing in Markdown, if you click preview, it will come up and show you exactly what it looks like in GitHub. So become a Python Pro, this is how we can easily change Python versions in Docker. So you fire up Docker, that will fire up a Docker container, which is like a little tiny Linux box or virtual machine, if you like, that you can access and run Python within. So we'll fire up this container and it will have Python installed inside of it. And like I say, we can choose um, Python 3.10, 3.11, 3.9, whatever the case may be. You fire it up, you, or you change the Python version, fire up Docker, and you should then be able to um, just use the version of Python that you need. So it's good to understand um, how you can switch between versions. Okay, that's the reason why I've kept it in there. I hope it ain't been too heavy for the first video. So let's use this command here, docker compose up the build. Uh, no configuration file provided. Where are we? Docker Compose. No configuration file. The rule. Right, hold on one sec. That was easy. Right, okay. The reason being is because I'm not in the right directory. Okay, you can see I'm in Become a Python Pro. If I cd into Docker example. There you go. So if I now go ls uh, dir, sorry. So uh, you can see now if you put dir, it will come up with all of the different um, files within that directory. Okay, so cls. Okay, so now close make a file. So I'll put that command back in here. There we go. Docker compose build. Happy days. That is now running. I've got docker compose on my other screen here. This is what you should see if you've got Docker desktop. No drama if you haven't, but this is essentially the running container, Docker container, which has Python installed. So if I click this, click into this, and then uh, looking for my options. Forget that, don't worry about it. I wanted to open up my terminal. I've got different versions of uh, Docker desktop and uh, they're a little bit different to use. It's a different one on my desktop. Okay, so now I've got Docker running. It's got Python installed on it. So what we can now do is we can use the next command, which is docker exec it python bash. Python is the name of the container. You can see now that I am within the Docker container, okay? So the root, the uh, working directory is called source. If I put ls, you can see it's got an app.py file in it. It's basically a Flask app that's running in the background. It allows us to, to run Python. So Python is in this Docker container. So I should be able to go Python version 3.10.10 because that's the version I've got running in this particular container. So I can go Python one plus one okay good next if we go into the do uh, sorry the docker file in here we can change this to 3.8 save
There we go, sorry. Okay, so I'm now back on my local machine. So I've exited out of the Docker container. Now if I just rebuild that again, we'll go through it, it'll rebuild with Python 3.8. Give it a second, hopefully it'll run. It's worth noting that I, I do a lot of Django um, tutorials and I work on a lot of Django projects and they've all got different Python versions. I rarely code directly on my local machine. I use Docker all of the time. So that's why I'm adding it to this tutorial. So, okay, that's now running. I can now enter into it. If I put Python dash dash version, I've got 3.8.16, okay? So that's how easy it is to change the Python version when you're using Docker. So I'll go Python one point two. Yeah, 1.1 1 .1 plus 6.7. Okay, there you go. So it does work. So this has been the first video of the course, Python, uh, Become a Python Pro. Hope you've liked it. Please subscribe and click the bell so you're notified every time I add a new video. And also like and add a comment on this video. Um, I tend to just blast them out without doing much editing. Um, so I go down sort of rabbit holes occasionally, but that's my style. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.